guys. Okay. Uh, let's do a couple videos here. First of all, I heard from G-Man and looks like he's going to need my help after all. So I'm back on going to South Carolina again. So, yeah. Uh, I need to talk to him, but I think I want to bring Inca with me if it's okay with him. I think he's got a yard that she can run in. Um, I'll have to check with him on that. So, yeah. I'm going to need uh, some help getting to G-Man. And uh, so if anybody wants to donate to the cause of guest money, and I think I'm going to have to have one hotel room to get there. Uh, it's cheap. I don't need something fancy. But if anybody wants to donate to get, help me get to G-Man to give him a hand, I'd sure appreciate it, and I know he would too. Okay, now I've got some emails from Miss Dominique, my thinker. So let's do a video on this. Uh, she's got the title of this is... Why some of us mistrust happy and why we get into panic spirals about failing at happier. Now, one of the reasons why I say happier and not happy is because I personally think that, especially for a star seed, not so much a long term human, but especially for star seeds, happy is almost an impossible thing to get to. And the reason, I've said this before, the reason that I say this is because a lot of starseeds um, remember instinctually what happy, what happy should feel like. We also instinctually know what love should feel like. And for a lot of us, looking for those, no, stop it, no, that's no, no, no. You can play with the other toys. There's other toys over there. She's so cute. They're cute. <laughs> but they're pulling the stuffing out of my bedding. So that's not good. Okay, so anyway, when we're taught in society, let's say you're starseed and you don't know anything about any of this stuff, but you're taught in society that this event or this circumstance should bring you happiness and you don't feel what you think it should happy should feel like you get despondent you get sad because then you think there's something wrong with you because you don't feel this happiness that everybody's talking about well I didn't know this until after I died and came back and really assessed it for a while but what I realized was that the happiness that I consider happy is not available and certainly wasn't available in 2008 to 2012 took a while for it even happy you know, anywhere close to happy or love was was on the planet and i would say that didn't happen until about 2014 to 2015 but that can change depending upon the timelines that you are on now the ones that i was dealing with which are the lower vibrations since that's what i came to deal with um then they certainly were not anywhere around so when i was supposed to be happy i didn't feel happy so I thought something was wrong with me. Now I know better. Now I know that there is a certain level of what humans call happiness and that that vibration of how happy changes depending upon where the planet is or what timeline you're on or what, what earth you're on. Okay? Some people are in a higher vibrational, higher 4D. Some are in lower 3D. Now the advantage to being a long-term human is because they've been away from the system, the other side, from home for so long, they can be happier with a lower vibration. That's practice. It takes practice to do that. Star seeds don't have the practice. So they still instinctually remember that, no, that, that's not what happiness feels like. That's not what happiness is. That's not what love is. You get that wrong. It, that's not right. It's, it's just not right. Once you understand that there's only a certain uh, amount of vibrations that's in like this that you're able to access in your human form, then you understand that there is the highest form of happy and you can let go of that instinctual level of happy and love that you expect to find here because it's just not here. And that's unreasonable. It's unreasonable to expect the world around you to have that level of that vibration of happiness or love if it's not available here because of the rest of the game. It's how the game is played. Which is the reason why I frequently say don't go for happy. Just don't even don't even look at that. Don't even look at that. 
just go for a little bit happier. And everyone can be a little bit happier in the moment. I don't care how bad the circumstance. I don't care how good the circumstance. You can always be just a tiny bit happier than you were a second ago. You can always do that. Everybody can. Don't look at the big picture. I know that's hard to do when you're in human form with what society says. But I'm telling you, we're going to be very in the now with this thing. And in the now, you're not going to look for happy. You're going to look for happier. Because if you're looking out there for happy, the next happy circumstance, that takes you outside of the now and it will wreak havoc on your life as it already has. Okay? So, why does, why do you get into a, a panic spiral about failing at happier? Well, you're going to fail at, ha at being happier because that you're here. You're here. It is an attempt to be happier all the time, but you always be going backwards. It's not in the going backwards. Of course, you're going to have that, and you need to just accept that, that this game is set up. Let me say this slowly. This game is set up so that God's all-powerful, all-knowing, all-creating, all-encompassing gods can forget who they are. Everything around you is built to try to keep you in amnesia. That is the game. That's what was requested. That was requested. Whether you like it or not, whether you understand it or not, uh, it doesn't really matter and it's not going to change. You're in the game and the game is built so that gods could come down and have the experience of forgetting that they're gods. It's that simple. Given that game plan, it is inevitable that you will walk through life and you will be triggered to unhappier moments. Because if you are a God, always understanding, believing, and knowing that you are a God with all the power that a God has, there would never be a moment in time that you would be unhappy. Ever. 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 Why? Why would there ever be? So something is triggering you moment to moment, day to day, that's going to get you to forget the God that you are. But it's a big game. They've been doing it for a very long time and they're very good at it. It is very difficult to keep seven billion gods in amnesia. This is a tricky business. So it is layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of stuff that is being done to you, around you, with you, that keeps you in that amnesia or gets you to temporarily if forget who you are. This guy is in a stand. Hold on, we've got an infraction within the housing unit. Something yeah. popped up here. Okay, so uh, knowing that that's the game that you're in, you just accept it. There's no reason to get upset or angry or, or anything about it. You just go, oops, forgot. Smile in that moment alone, knowing that you are no longer happier. All you got to do is catch that and then run through what I just said. It's just a game. Seven billion people, seven billion gods in amnesia. Of course, I got hooked by one of the things. No big deal. Then you can laugh at that. I can laugh at it. I laugh at it all the time. Ah, got me. In that moment, I am usually looking at the circumstance in amazement going, wow, these guys are good. These guys are good. Now, that alone, just the catching of it, the understanding of it, that is enough to give me happier. You know, I don't need to solve this. There's nothing to solve. It is a game. It is set up. Everybody here agreed to it. Nothing is wrong. Nothing needs to be fixed. Okay? All right. So, hopefully, that will explain why you um, fall off the happier and happier um, let's see. And she also says, mistrusting happier and happier. Now, I understand mistrusting happy. I don't un understand mistrusting happier and happier. Because happier to me, what I'm talking about is an instant. It's a momentary thing. But it's done moment after moment after moment. I'm doing it one right after the other. But it's not a consistent long. Like happy is, I'm happy now. I am happy with my life. That, just in this, the statement of it, just insinuates over a long period of time, 
for a longer period of time. To me, being a little bit happier is very, very short. It's very much in the now. There's not much um, pressure with that. It's not much pressure. If I'm happier now and then I look a second later and something's drawn my attention, I'm not easy for me to grab it right then and be a little bit happier. I don't attach it to further down the road at all. That's where the pressure comes and that's where the tail spinning will come. It's putting yourself under pressure for the future. Worrying about the past where you were not happy enough. Worrying about, well, will I stay happier tomorrow? Don't do that. You stay in the now. Be a little bit happier. You're responsible for this moment and only this moment. Stay there. You won't tail spin off. You don't have time. You don't have time. And then she says, mistrusting happier and happier. It's sometimes because feeling the pain of others is what has felt like a lifeline back to them. And to let go of that lifeline feels as if we're letting go of them, like a mountain climber, climber cutting a rope. Well, um, this attachment to others and what you are going to do with others or for others needs to end. It needs to end. They are gods. They don't need your help. They don't need your help. Um, whether you understand it or believe it or not, you are still going from moment to moment, jumping through timelines. You're going to different aspects of them. You're not even dealing with the same person. When you believe and when you want bad enough to be on a planet where everyone is at peace, everyone knows true love, everyone feels happiness, everyone does exactly what they want, when you believe in that, that they don't need you to solve their problems, that they are each and every one of them gods and powerful enough to create that reality, and that you are pow powerful enough to join them, that is the world you will be in. As long as you have this need to be helped or help others, you will be on a planet, a reality, an aspect of people that will need and be needed. Okay? But you, you, that, that all goes back to you just don't understand the concept that you are gods. And they are too. To assume that they need anything or that you need anything outside of yourself just shows that you do not understand nor truly, truly believe the concept of that you are a god. And that you are all, an all-powerful god. That is why this concept... I want everybody to look in the mirror and say, I am God. I am God. Until you really get it through your, your, your brains. Because right now you think you're insignificant and that you, that you need to help each other. The world that I'm going to in 5D, nobody needs help from anybody. Everybody's very aware that they control the whole shebang. Uh, there's nothing can happen to them that they don't want to happen to them. And that's what 5D is all about. Well, you don't get to 5D where I make you responsible. It's like, you know, it's kind of like raising a kid. You know, eventually you have to cut them loose and you have to say, hey, you got this. Well, that's what you got to do with the people around you. Say, hey, you're a god. You got this. And downplay everything that seems to be a big event. It is not a big event, guys. This is a game. When you leave this game, you are going to be amazed at how seriously you took all of this. When it was just a game, it's just an experience, and there are countless more like it, only a lot more fun. So, if you are with someone, and you need them, and they need you, and you break it off, is there going to feel be a feeling of abandonment? Sure, but there doesn't need to be. All you have to do is get rid of seeing that you need them or they need you. In that moment, you go to an aspect where they don't. They don't need you. And any time that you need somebody else or somebody else needs you, that is a that is a 3D, 4D game right there. Because gods don't need anything. They don't need anything. We don't need anything. We are just creationist crazy people. We just go around creating, experiencing, creating, experiencing. Um... And, uh, and Dominique, uh, she's, she's really, she's really an awesome person. She's really into helping people. So this is a hard concept for her to get that, that people in pain, 
Uh, for me to say that people are in pain or in difficult cir circumstances and pain and struggle, that they're doing that on purpose. But let me assure you, everyone is doing it on purpose. Uh, there is a higher sense to all this. And it just feels terrible to you because you're in a skin suit. You're in a human skin suit. And everything that you've set up, your emotional system, your five senses, lead you to believe that this feels bad. But outside of the skin suit, this is a vibrational creation and it it's just not like that. It's just not like that. There is no, everyone is doing this on purpose and I'm going to keep saying that until you get it. Nobody can die or be tortured or in despair or pain or agony unless they wanted it to be that way. So you trying to fix it and you get, if you get batted back by them, I, I guarantee you they went to a lot of trouble to set up this circumstance. It is very difficult to forget that you are a God. If you want the experience of despair, it is a very unique vibrational experience. I've told you guys this before. War is a horrible thing. Everybody would agree. But the relationship between a man and a man is never more intense and more unique than it is in the middle of a very intense war. So if somebody wants to have that experience, that is the only way that they're going to get it. Two men cannot get it any other way. It cannot be done any other way. We'll roll that into all of the other things that you think of as, of as bad. These are unique experiences that can only be experienced from a certain context. And that is the experience that they are wanting to have. Now, if you're really drawn to helping them, and that is the, maybe that's the experience you want to have, is to helping people. But I just want you to understand that as long as you are in helping people mode, you are going to be in a timeline where people need to be helped. So if your ultimate goal is to be on a planet where everything is perfect, where nobody needs help, you cannot continue to help people. You've got to allow them to be on the the timeline that they're on to experience what they wish to experience and you need to move yourself to a timeline where everyone's done with that and everybody is is ready to live in a different type of background and that's what 5d is okay so can you do a bit bit about techniques for getting past those fear spins that crop up when we go off course what you need to do is you need to catch it as soon as possible the, the sooner you catch it, the easier it is. The sooner you catch it, the easier it is. If you catch it right at the beginning, it's very, very easy. If you've already tailspin way out of control, then you've got to walk it backwards every step. And that's just saying it over and over again. And yeah, I did that. I've done it. I did it for years. And I had to talk myself out of it. The same thing with worry. That fear and worry, fear and worry, I had to talk myself out of it. And you, I just did the same thing over and over again. First thing I said is, whoa, 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 wait, wait. Why am I in fear? Why am I worrying? Why am I in pain? Why am I doing this? You have to stop yourself and find out what's going on. That's the first thing you've got to do. You've got to figure out what's going on. You need to see, is there something I can do about it right this second? If there is, do it. If there's something that would make you happier, right this second, do it immediately. Don't put it off. Don't wait. Pick up the phone. Get in the car. Walk away. Do something to change it right that second. If there isn't anything that you can do right this second, let it go. Just let it go. How do you let it go? You just do it. The same way that you concentrate on the, the circumstance, you don't concentrate on the circumstance. How do you do that with my little, my little things that I did in videos way, way, way back then? You have that instant thought that brings you happiness that nothing could interfere with. With me, it's holding my babies for the first time, feeling the weight of those babies in my arms. Nobody can touch that. Those first two, three seconds where I could feel the weight. Now, I can't stay there longer than that because right after that comes responsibility with that weight. But right those first couple, two, three seconds, the magnificence, the amazement that I had with that little tiny person coming from me got two or three seconds there. That buys me enough time to get to a song. I've got my songs that I've got lined up that will give me a minute and a half to five minutes of feeling at ease. 
very least, I go to those songs. That gives me enough time to, if it still hasn't worked, if I'm still, when I stop listening to the song, I still go back into the worry, fear, despondency, anger, whatever, then I will go find my go-to movies. Then I will make myself sit and watch the movie, focus on the movie. When the movie's done, come out of it, see if I'm out of it, talk myself through it, see if I can back it back down to the original event, and tell myself I'm going to catch it earlier. At this point, I've been doing this for so many years that now I catch it very quickly because I am totally addicted to the higher vibrations. If you're trying to bring me down, I'm going to get snappy with you, and I have with people. If you're going to insist on being in worry, fear, anger, despondency, and you're going to communicate with me, I will come down for a second to talk to you, but then I'm going to try to get you to come on up out of it. But if you're insistent on staying in those lower vibrations, I will probably be snappy with you and then I will disengage because I choose not to stay there. You can stay there or not stay there. It is ultimately up to you and no one can get you out but you. Ultimately, you're the only one that can get you out. You have to figure out the ways to get you there, what is triggering you, and how to get yourself out and how to stay there longer, longer periods of time. It's up to you. You're the only one that could do it for you. Okay? Well, this is 20 minutes long, so let's cut it off here, and then I'll go to our next question. I love you guys, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon.